First of all, man, thanks for taking time. It's kind of a fun, exciting day. I had a filmmaker the other day tell me that opening day is 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 the oddest God to pray to because everybody just, they, they focus on when a film opens and how much money is going to come in. Do you allow that to consume you or do you just enjoy the ride and just the excitement that your film is going to hit? No, I know. I know exactly what you mean. I think I was always thinking there's, if you, if you don't let those expectations get a hold of you, then they can't like affect you when it actually happens. So my expectations have always been, I just want the film to be seen by the people who want to see it. And that's all I can hope for. So it's one of those things where obviously I would like for it to make money, but, and then everybody who like invested in the film and and uh, and believed in me to make their money back, but at the same time, like I can't think that way as a, as the director. So so today it's just it's it's exciting. It's kind of nerve wracking. I've got a lot of uh, family coming to see us tonight in Austin. I'm here for Q and A Q&A here and. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm just excited. I know you wore a couple of hats in the making of this. Let's talk about the writing hat. Talk a little bit about the story and, and how the concept came to you about this guy who's, you know, kind of debunking cults, but at the same time he's kind of given up on his career even. And uh, just talk a little bit about that story evolving in your head. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've always been fascinated by cults, even as a kid, which is probably a little strange to say, but, like, it's true. I, I would definitely watch any documentary or read books on the subject, or watch films on the subject when I was younger, and and that kind of just uh, interest has has always been kind of in the back of my head. And and when it came time to write uh, a feature again after I had done several shorts, I I kind of thought that this would be the best story for me to tell. And it also really did lend itself like cults are so fascinating, crazy, and and scary, but at the same time, there's they're just so out there and weird that I felt like it would lend itself to the comedic tone that we wanted to kind of put over it as well. Um, and it, then the deprogramming aspect of it, where you actually take somebody away from the cult and you break them down and you de-brainwash them. And, and the fact that that was a real thing, I, I felt like that was the, the coolest story to t- kind of come at that cult angle, uh, or the cult, the coolest angle to come at the cult idea. Um, and so I just started working on it, and uh, it was a very quick writing process, about two weeks, but like the actual story I've been working on in my head for about a year, and uh, yeah, everything worked out the way I wanted. It was the quickest writing uh, like thing I, I'd ever done, but also came really smoothly, too. It wasn't like I was battling with the script, so... Yeah, it feels really right. Yeah, it did, and you did a, a great job, I thought, of of hiding. You knew something, as a viewer, I knew something wasn't quite right, but you really don't know what it is, and, and you're right. Cults, <laughs> can either, cults can either be very dramatic and, and horror-based, or they can be kind of that dark black comedy that you, you've sort of done here, and so I, I liked that aspect of, we all know, yeah, something, there's going to be a cat in the bag, we just don't know what it is yet, and that was uh, that was pretty cool. And also, I guess it's worth mentioning, uh, this script made the blacklist, which is, for those that don't know, is a very good list to be on in Hollywood of, of scripts that people say, hey, this is a script that's un, unmade and needs to be made, and you're actually the second guy that I've talked to this year who was on that list, and one of them won an Oscar this year, so that's pretty good company. Yes, that's pretty good company. I did not know that. Uh, I guess you talked to um, the, the writer of uh, Imitation Game? Yeah, Graham Moore, who was a great, okay, a great cool. interview. Yeah, so it was really exciting to see him win, because it, it's good to see Hollywood recognizing scripts and not just regurgitating the same thing over and over again. Of course. No, it's, it's a really cool list, and like you said, even though it's called The Blacklist, it's actually a very good list to be on. Um, the funny thing about it, though, is that we were on the list even as an, which is for unproduced scripts, we were on that list uh, while I was editing the film. We, we, we got the word that we were on it, which is kind of funny because we weren't unproduced at that point, but we also made our film in, in secret. Not, not necessarily to be secretive to get on the list or something like that, because that was never even a thought. It, we made the, made the movie kind of in secret because we're a smaller movie and you can save money by doing certain things certain ways. And so we did that. And so nobody really, like everyone who voted on it, didn't know that we were already made. But I'm sitting in the editing room getting texts and, and, and tweets and voicemails and stuff all of a sudden. And everyone's freaking out because the blacklist was a really cool thing. Uh, but it just, it was funny that we hadn't even like thought of that as being a thing because we had already made the film by that point. Oh, that's interesting. Now, and also, this it did really well at South by in 2014, and now we have South by coming up. How important is film festivals like South by for up and coming? Like you said, you've done a few short films, so it's not like you were brand new when this came out, and nor was your cast. But how important is it for film festivals like this to really get film seen? Well, it's it's hugely important, and and for us, South by Southwest ended up being the best fit for the film, and. 
and I, I, Southside doesn't really see themselves as a festival that uh, is, is all about sales and stuff. They just want people to see movies that they like. But one of the nice uh, things about South by is because it is bigger and because they do select really nice, like good quality films, uh, distributors do come to the festival and they watch them. And and even though like the end game is just to get it seen, it's not about sales or money or anything. If you sell your film, more people will see it, and that that's what we were hoping for. And so when Screen Media saw it at South by and then ended up purchasing it later in 2014. I mean, that was just the best thing that we could ever have hoped for for this film because now it's going to be seen by more people. It's on iTunes. It's on all the VOD things and in some theaters. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, in the end, like, South by and, and other festivals are, are great because they allow people to, like, spot a good film or, or, or discover new talent and everything. But in our instance in particular, it was just great because it did end up getting us sold and being seen by more people in the end. Now, I, I know couples um, who are married or dating who can't, paint a room together without breaking up <laughs> and yet you and your you and your wife mary elizabeth have have tackled this the film process uh, did you come out at the end okay we i mean we're just like best friends we work really really well together it was never even a question of if it was the right or wrong decision um we just were doing it and and you do have people that tell you like you're going to ruin your marriage and stuff and and it's a bad idea for you to kind of take that step together but those were usually the people that, that didn't know us so the people that knew us uh, and family and friends, they were beyond excited for us because they knew what this was going to mean. And and for me, like there was no question that I was going to cast Marion as the lead role. Uh, I wrote it for her, and and I knew what she was capable of. And so, uh, yeah, to, to take that and give it to somebody else just because of being scared of working with her, and it just didn't ever cut across my mind at all. So. And then on another thing that was really interesting is that Leland Dorser, our lead actor who plays Ansel in the film, he had done a film with his wife a couple of years ago that he directed and acted in, but she was also the lead actress. And he had been through it. They had been through it together. And he told me that you're going to come out stronger and, and your relationship's going to be stronger for it. And you guys are taking it stuff that a lot of people are afraid to do, but should, like some people should do. And, and so getting that kind of blessing and, and, uh, a uh, vote of confidence from him was just so, so helpful and, and, and meaningful. Now, as a director, there were a big cast, a nice cast in here, including Lance Reddick, who we love, John Grease, who will always be Uncle Rico to us, Beth Grant. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of scenes between Leland and, and Mary that where they're having those conversations. As a director, are you kind of a micromanager, or do you like to step back and let things just organically happen? I'm more of a, you trust your actors uh, to come prepared, which they did, and you trust them to uh, to, to be, the, be the character which you created, but it's now in their hands. Like I, I, I had no problem stepping back and saying, you guys do your thing. And I would step in here and there and say like, maybe try this or try that. And sometimes I would be wrong, but I would be the first one to admit it. And so then I would, we would go back and do it their way again. But a lot of that came from preparation before we even started shooting. I mean, I know Mary very, very well and she knows me. So with her, it, it wasn't even as much like prep as, as just being comfortable with, with what each other was expecting out of the film. But with Leland, uh, we brought him into the, to, into the fold, into the family, as, uh, if you want to say it that way. And, uh, we worked on the script together, uh, not, not working on it as in like rewriting, but like really delving into it and figuring out what things meant. And, and I, we did that. We, we met like three times before we shot, uh, cause it was about a month between him being cast and us doing the film. So that wasn't a lot of time, but we worked really hard and diligently and, and Leland came prepared and, and we just like, when, when they're that good, you just step back as a director and you can just like watch it. And that's the best feeling in the world. Absolutely. Well, it was a good feeling for us to watch it happen on screen too, because it was a great film and I uh, wish you good luck with it today. We're going to get the word out about it and I uh, give our best to Mary and cause she did a great. fabulous Thank job. You so she, much, man. she really did. And uh, have fun down there in Austin and good luck tonight with the screening with the fam and uh, appreciate your time, buddy. Thank you so much, Matt. I'll talk to you guys soon.